Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and another card making episode of my February stamp set of the month series featuring the stamp set Feeling Froggy by Sunny Studios. Today I am making two interactive cards. Let's jump in and get started because this is kind of a long video. <laughs> first, I am gonna create a background for my first card using Concord and Ninth inks. I just wanted to show you the cute 22 set you can get with all their colors in one little box. I love it and I love all of their colors. Um, Sunny Studio sells these inks and I will have them linked in their shop as well as the Concord and Ninth shop. So if you want to check them out, you can. The surface of these pads is very um, soft and spongy, not a hard pad. So unique and um, they work great for the turnabout stamps if you're into things from Concord and Ninth as well. So I'm using these colors to make a sunset cloud background. I wanted to try out spritzing this ink with water and it does have an effect, but it more looks like an accident instead of an accent. So I'm going to leave that off, but I am going to come in with my um, metallic watercolors from Altenew and splatter this with three different colors, a gold color, a copper color, and white. Um, that will give me the cool splatter that I love. Splatter is my favorite. I like it in excess, especially because a lot of this background is going to be covered up. So it's okay with me that there's a lot on there because I want it to show in those little parts that will be showing. But look at that shimmer and shine and splatter. I'm now bringing in my country scene border stamps. I am using the one that is the pond and I just have a card front size panel. But I remember last time I was using this and I stamped it, I went to die cut it. It didn't line up with the die. So to do or to fix that, I die cut that border out and just save the top portion. That way I could use it to line up my stamp because the stamp is so thin in the middle, it's easy to set it on your paper in a way that doesn't match up with the die. So having that guide really helped. I'm gonna stamp this two times because I'm making two cards. So I'm just gonna flip my paper over and then I'll stamp it again. Uh, my paper did get a little wet, so I end up having to stamp this side a couple times because the edge didn't, one side didn't quite get stamped well. But now when I go to die cut this, it does line up really nicely with my die. So I'll die cut both of those out and I will move on to stamping some extra images from this same stamp set, a lily pad with a flower on it and some cattails. So these will be perfect for building the scenes I'm making today. I will go ahead and start coloring these in. I have the markers I'm using on the screen. I had to greatly speed up a lot of the coloring today because two interactive cards does take a lot of time in this video. So I'm using some E23 as my lightest and E27 as my darkest. And then for the stems of the cattail, cattails, I will come in with E34. So just some really simple coloring. Um, you really don't have to do too much when you're coloring in images that are so small and two markers will really do the trick. I like to color this little space above the pond green, otherwise it just seems awkward white. So I colored it the same green color that I used on the cattails greenery. Next, I'm using BG05 for the darkest color of my pond, bringing that in from the edge. And I am using the chisel tip of my marker because it gets ignored a lot. So I wanted to give it a little love and fill in this big space with those BG markers. Um, next, I am using R22 and R21 to color in the flowers. I'm gonna die cut those out, but the images from my uh, Feeling Froggy that you see right here, this is my stamp set of the month. This one, I pre-stamped and die cut a bunch of these because I'm gonna be using them <clears throat> throughout this entire month. So I also brought in a coordinating stamp set, which is the Froggy Friends. You'll see that in some of my supporting images and on the next card, on card number two. Uh, it's an entire four by six stamp set that has three different frogs in it, some other lily pads and flowers, really cute sentiments. So I did the same for that. I stamped a bunch. So this add-on, or this 
interactive card is the Magic Iris card. I recently made a mermaid snow globe and really loved it, so I wanted to make one for my frog. So with that Magic Iris set, you just wanna kind of think in threes. You need three rings, three of the balloon shapes, three of the rectangle stabilizer pieces, and then one of those rings you're gonna die cut with the gear looking piece. So I showed that on the previous screen. I also die cut my snow globe and I'm giving some ink to some of the pieces. So the snow globe and the balloon shapes. These are the pieces that are going to show when this mechanism is all put together. So I wanted them to look like they're reflecting the sunlight because a snow globe is glass, right? So that's why I did that. All right, so that's all inked up and now I'm going to bring in this round piece to put in my balloon pieces. So you can see this one was cut with that gear die. That die is a tool that will help you create this magic iris. Once those balloon pieces are inserted, I added a 3 16th of an inch glue dot to each of the X's. I'm going to make sure those are lined up with the curve of this circle before I add on this second of the rings only the glue dots are holding it in place. When you flip that over, you'll see there's some little notches that the gear die created in this circle. Now I can add those three stabilizer pieces to that and you wanna use some tape adhesive, not glue, because the glue could seep through those perforated lines and glue your magic iris together. Ask me how I know. Okay, this is the handle to your magic iris. I like to double it up sometimes because it just, you're you're moving it a lot so having it a little bit sturdier is always nice you're going to glue that so that it was next to one of those stabilizer pieces creating a v-shape then flip it over put some adhesive on the back of those stabilizer pieces and when you wrap them around adding in your third ring the stabilizer pieces are what's going to hold it together but you don't want to fold them in really tight it needs a little wiggle room and able for it to be able to move and open and close. Okay, so back to my snow globe. I am gonna color the bottom so it looks like wood. I'm using the same three E markers that I used on all my coloring, and I'm just creating lines. So when I first start, I really feel like this looks like a hot mess. It looks horrible. <laughs> but if you just keep going from light to dark, and then you can go back over with your light and soften out some of your dark lines. I left a center highlight, and then when it really got towards the end, instead of just doing lines, I added some really elongated, irregular ovals some ovals they didn't close some were just like a line with a curved end some were some little dashes and that really adds to the look of the wood grain so that will finish it up and I didn't have to worry about keeping it within a certain um, area because I have these accent pieces from the snow globe add-on set that I die cut from some kind of coppery brushed metallic paper and I glued those over the edges now I am going to create a pond for this A2 size card that's vertical. So what I need to do is cut it in half and snip some off and they are going to overlap. There will be a seam, but that doesn't matter because my snow globe is actually gonna cover it up. So I love that. So just gluing those into place, and when they do overlap, they meet up really nicely. But it, like I said, that will be covered up. So next, I'm going to take the front side of my magic iris and add glue to that and glue it to my snow globe. Now, I put the tape there so I'd know about where I wanted the handle to be. I needed that handle to be up a little bit higher. I got it a little bit low, but it still works. I'm going to add glue here and put back those shine marks. I left them white um, because like if I was drawing on my stamped images, I would definitely use a white gel pen for a shine mark. So I thought leaving them white was great. So now when you attach this to your card, you're going to put adhesive only on those three stabilizer pieces so the magic iris can still move. I doubled up my foam pieces because once again, I'm going to try to add a piece of candy to this. All right, next I was showing you there. Those are the foam squares I get from the Dollar Tree. I love them. You can find them in the hardware section if you go to the Dollar Tree. And you guessed it, they're a dollar. So I had to triple 
up my foam squares at the base in order to get the same height as I had on my magic iris. All right, so now I'll add the little piece that kind of decorates the handle to match. And um, I like to inlay the arrow in there and then I'm gonna color my shine mark and my arrow with Wink of Stella for some shine. Here's all my images. So what I like to do is just lay them out where I think they're gonna go, get a feel for it. And then once I have everything where I want it, then I will go ahead and glue everything into place. So there are some flies in here and uh, no, just the flies that are from the Froggy Friends stamp set and the lily pad and the extra cattails are from that country scene border stamp set. So everything's glued in place now. I'm going to open my magic iris and um, I took some suggestions from you guys and got some Andy's mints. You might remember in my last card um, month stamp set of the month series, <laughs> I wanted to put a candy in there. So if I was going to do this, I would have to triple up my foam squares. I think it might work. And then I would have to put the foam squares four deep on the base. So I just decided it was not worth it. The candy idea, it might be a no-go. <laughs> I'm really sad about it. I got to figure this out. Maybe those um like chocolate coins might be a little bit thinner. That might be fun for St. Patrick's Day, but I really love having these snow globe cards that are different themes. I love using it outside of Christmas. And if you didn't catch my last video with the mermaid snow globe, I'll link it at the end of this video and you can go check that out. So that finishes up this card. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to a card base, but I really love the colors and the little um, like just the start of the sunset look. Okay, for card number two, I am using this flippin' awesome die set from Lawn Fawn. So you want to die cut four of the little panels and four squares. So you can see I have the scallop squares, I have the plain squares, and then one of that long mechanism. I also use the add-on to die cut that rectangle that I'm inking up right now and I am adding ink to all the pieces so they have that same sunset look and then I'm going to splatter all the pieces with the same three colors of metallic watercolor that I used the first time and that is yummy. I love, love the splatter on these. And like I said, a lot of this will be covered up, so it's okay to go overboard. So I'm gonna use this um, Woodland Border die set from Sunny Studios and die cut just the bottom of these same scallop squares and rectangle so that I can have a water portion. Now here you'll see the Froggy Friends stamps. You can see those three other frogs they're going to go on my flippin' awesome scenes. So what I'm doing is creating four miniature scenes that you will flip through as you pull the interactive element on this card. So I'm doing the same coloring technique for my little water pieces as I did on the first pond. And um, I just went ahead and colored all those out just as you saw me color the last images for the first card. So now I'm gonna add the pond to the bottom of this panel. This card is going to be the um, horizontal card, so that pond fits across there perfectly. And then I'm gonna add my little pond pieces to my sunset pieces. Don't they look cool? Now for this interactive piece, you wanna fold on all the scored lines. I like to fold them forward and back because this is the part where they're going to flip. And then these little tabs are gonna fold around to the back. And those tabs are important. That's the part that's gonna hold this down to your card. So once I have all that folded, I'm going to add all the blue squares. Now the first one, you're going to put glue on the entire backside and line it up with that first scored line. The next one, you're only going to put glue between the first square and the next scored line and attach it that way. And you're going to continue till you have all four of your squares added just like that. So only putting glue on that little space between the scored lines and attaching them. So they're like... Ad ad adhered like they're flaps and we want them like that so they will flip and move as we pull that tab. 
So the first square is going to have this little frog. I feel like he kind of looks like a baby frog. So he's going to be on the first square. I'm going to add a fly and this little flight trail. I feel like when I'm looking at this now, the fly should go on the other end of the trail, but I don't know. Not sure now. All right, so then the next one, I'm gonna have this frog here who is smiling. And I feel like this is the frog maybe when he's grown up. Doesn't he look like an older version of the first frog? I think so. Um, I'm gonna put a fly on each of those squares. The next one has the frog with an open mouth smiling. I think it's super cute. And then we'll add some of those little cattails and flowers to the images. I ended up having to uh, some of these were already dry by the time I decided to add them. So all I did was snip off some of the edge and then it fit in there really good. These are the little tricks we have to do, right? <laughs> and I'll do the same thing on this flower. I love this large flower for the lily pad. I really thought it would be... Um, more, I don't know, like authentic to have the flowers be white, but I just loved this kind of corally pink for this card. So now I'll add this frog who is jumping. I used the smaller lily pad this time because I felt like if he was jumping, maybe the lily pad would seem farther away. So that's what I did there. And then each of them gets their little fly to finish them off. For the long panel, this is gonna be the very end panel of this card. I'm adding the larger cattails, which are from the Froggy Friends stamp set. And so is this saying, you're totally awesome. Now these sentiments look bubble cut. That's because all the images from the Froggy Friends stamp set, I cut out with my Cameo Silhouette using my pick scan mat because I don't have the die set for Froggy Friends. I got so much stuff from Sunny Studios, I decided I would hold off on getting that die set and use my pick scan mat. So I was able to bubble cut those out. If you would like to see more videos using the Cameo Silhouette and cutting out things like sentiments, I will have my playlist for the Cameo in the description box below so you can check that out. Um, I love using my Cameo Silhouette. So now I'm adding each of those four scalloped squares to a panel on my Flippin' Awesome mechanism. And then this piece will go on the very end to have our sentiment. And right here I decided I really needed another dragonfly. So I colored one out and added that to the scene. And I think the dragonfly is so cute. So there you go. That finishes off all the stamped images. Now I wanted to add this right here. It just seemed a little bit too big. This is a, um, a flippant awesome add-on. So it has this scalloped rectangle and the rectangle I used on the very last panel of my mechanism. And some uh, different tabs you can put on the end of your pull. I'll show you in just a second. So here I am using a banner die from the Flippin' Awesome set to die cut out a panel that my sentiment will go on. And there is the little handle for the, the pull tab. And that is from the add-on set. So it has different elements you can add to the end, like this one. So from the little that little triangle that die cut from the center, I just press that into my um, poppy ink pad and made it a darker color versus die cutting it from a red, from a second color. All right, so now I'm adding some double stick tape to the back of those tabs and then a little bit of liquid glue so I have time to scoot this around if I need to. So since the scallop panel was a little bit too big, I just glued my flippin' awesome panel to my card front. Um, I'm not sure what I think about it. I kind of feel like it looks like it's floating in the air. Just, I feel like it kind of needed the mat to ground it. So you tell me what you think. I, uh, yeah, I would love to know your thoughts if it looks weird just floating in the sky like that. Um, now I am coloring this banner with that wood grain technique that I used on the first card. I wanted it to kind of have the look of maybe a log floating in the water. So that's why I did that. Plus I just love coloring like this. I love it. Um, like I said, at first it looks crazy bad. And then at the end, if you just keep going, it looks really good. So give it a try. I'll add the sentiment to that and then glue it down. So it looks like it's floating in the pond. And then we'll add that to an A2 size card that is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a fourth. And there you can see all the little froggy scenes. 
going by as you flip it. I love that. It just makes me smile, this card. And I love the little four scenes with all the different frogs. There's both of the cards I made for episode two in my February stamp set of the month series featuring Feeling Froggy from Sunny Studios. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will be back again next Tuesday with a, another card featuring this stamp set. Make sure you leave a comment below because I do have a giveaway. If you comment on every episode in this series, your name will be entered to win a slimline banner die set from Sunny Studios. Thank you so much for watching. Happy stamping. Bye.